Uh, okay, hello. I'll be talking today about computer vision stuff for driverless AI. So my name is Yohan Babakin. A couple of words about me. Originally, I'm from Minsk, Belarus, and now I work in H2O's office in Prague in Czech Republic. So I'm also a Kaggle Grandmaster, and the majority of my medals were uh, some kind of from image classification, segmentation, and other problems. So I basically have some experience in image processing. And basically, if we are speaking about different data types uh, in machine learning, uh, we are like main four major data types. It's kind of da tabular data, time series, images, and text. And driverless AI could work already with tabular time series and text. And so logical, like, uh, next step is to uh, make it work with images. So what, it is what we are doing right now. And actually, there, are, uh, there is a number of different problems for computer vision. So it could start from simple, like, classification problems, like which could detect what is located on the image. Or uh, another problem type is semantic segmentation. In this case, we need to classify each pixel of the image. And so we obtain some kind of a masks. So we, we are just specifying here, like, cat, sky, tree, and so on. And another, like, uh, an, uh, another problems include uh, multiple objects. It is uh, the case when we do not need to, like, say that there is a doc on, on, the on, uh, on the image, but we need to specify each instance of the doc and also draw a bounding box or a mask over, uh, over each doc. So basically, uh, we have right now two working prototypes for image classification and semantic segmentation that are like, uh, run uh, 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 automatically without any supervision, and we have work in progress uh, for object detection and instance segmentation. All right, so what is the issue about like building automatic models for deep learning? First of all, there is uh, the right number uh, like different hyperparameters uh, that are crucial to your training and also that are like depend on, on your data. And it includes some kind of learning rate, selecting the optimizer, the loss function, batch size, input size, architecture of the ne neural network, and so on. Apart from that, we need to also uh, select like some kind of the training process. So how long do we, do we gonna train? So it's number of epochs as a cropping strategy, for example, here on the right, whether we're gonna uh, make some random crops or resize in the images, uh, what aug augmentations should we apply to our data, and also select that, like, the learning rate schedule, like the scheduler for, for our learning rate. Uh, and all this stuff is done automatically right now uh, in driverless AI. So it's selecting based on your data, or based on the data sites, ba based uh, on the number of classes, and all the peculiarities of your data. It selects the optimal like uh, hyperparameters, the optimal training strategy, and trains the, the, the best model it could. So speaking about architectures, we have three major uh, options. The first one is just using pre-trained models from the ImageNet. Uh, basically, now the list, this list includes about like over 30 models. Uh, it's different ResNets, ResNex, DenseNets, mobile nets, like uh, recent efficient nets, and so on. Also, if you're like particularly sure that uh, some custom architecture works really great for your data set, then you could define like your custom architecture. So you just define like a set of layers you, you want to apply in your architecture, and uh, it will work. And uh, another option is neural architecture search. Uh, the idea here is that uh, we are searching for the architecture, or for the neural network architecture, that is like most suitable for your data set. So it means that we are not using some famous architectural architectures like ResNets, but developing completely new architecture. And that is why it's kind of uh, trains a little bit longer, because we need to define the architecture, we need to train it from scratch, but it we also have this option. All right, and uh, another, uh, another idea is that we do not fix any hyperparameters during the training. So we kind of change, uh, like using this, some kind of progressive learning. So for example, here uh, on the x axis, you see the number of epochs. So it's kind of the time of the training. And on the y axis, it is uh, the example for augmentation strengths. So like the higher on the y axis, there are more like advanced uh, augmentations we're using. And we see that during the training process, we're kind of increasing uh, these augmentations. Uh, and afterwards, in the end, we're just switching them off to like uh, eliminate the bias in the data if it, it was introduced by the augmentations. And also here, you can see that we're we are starting with some small images, training on uh, small images to increase the speed during the initial epochs, and afterwards, like increasing uh, their image size gradually. And uh, now I will show a simple use case, uh, how, it is, how it looks like uh, in driverless AI. 
Uh, we have the data set from uh, the past competition by Intel on the Analytics GitHub platform. Uh, it contains 15,000 trained images and six classes. They include like buildings, forest, glacier, mountain, sea, and street. And let me switch to the driverless. All right. Uh, so we have here the trained data I have loaded. Uh, if you will look at it, probably you didn't see. OK, so basically, we need uh, in our data is a CSV file with two columns, uh, the path is, and the label. The path is kind of a physical path uh, of our image on the disk. And label is kind of, uh, if you're solving the classification problem, it's just a label of, of your class. If you're solving the segmentation problem, then we are using like run, uh, run length encoded masks, uh, and it is also provided as a CSV file. Afterwards, we are going to add this data in the experiment. I have pre-run one already. And you can see that it, is, uh, it looks pretty much similar to the usual driverless AI uh, user interface. Uh, we are solving here the classification problem. Uh, however, for the segmentation problem, we are like, adjusting some tweaks to the UI because it's kind of uh, neither regression nor uh, classification problem type. So it's kind of completely another problem type. So we need to apply some, some, some tweaks to, to, to the user interface. But for the classification, everything looks really similar except for single uh, single image here uh, at the bottom. So here, uh, previously, there, there was uh, some kind of uh, variable importance. So uh, during the training, we could see what was the major variable, the most important variable. Uh, however, now in our data, we have only single feature called pass. And so there is no need to show the, the feature importance. And now we are using this field for the tensor board, the link to the tensor board. So it opens a new window. Uh, it, del uh, it is delivered together with, uh, with the driverless AI. So it just uses uh, another port. Uh, and it allows us to some kind of visualize uh, our training process. So initially in driverless, here on the left, you see like individual model results. However, uh, in the tensor board, you could like uh, go uh, uh, one level down and like see uh, the performance of each model individually. For example, here we could select like uh, uh, here on the left a bunch of different models we have run. We could select a single one, and here uh, in the red is like our validation accuracy, and uh, in the blue is our uh, training accuracy. We could also see uh, the loss, the learning rate we were using, and also uh, a lot of. Uh, images data, so we could start uh, looking at uh, the train data, so we could see our train data, this kind of mountain street, uh, and so on. Also, we could use the data after, uh, after the augmentations have been applied to make sure that we're using like correct augmentations and they do not kind of bias our data. And during the training process, we could also look at the confusion matrices so we could like uh, show, show, uh, look dynamically during the, the epochs how, how it changes. So we see like uh, it is like go, going to, to the more the, the diagonal form during the time. And also we could see like the test errors. So it is uh, the, the errors our model is making uh, on the validation data. For example, here predicting uh, like mountain instead of sea. And finally, after the model has been trained, we could like uh, interpret the results of, of, of the model. So here we're using the GradCam model. It allows us to some kind of draw a heat map over our, our images and uh, to like kind of look where our, our neural network is looking at while making predictions, while making the classification. And we could like uh, again like uh, interpret this black box and to visualize the predictions. And finally, uh, there is also one feature of TensorBoard called Projector. Uh, it allows us to use the embeddings that were uh, obtained after the model has been trained. So we are just taking the last layer of our neural network. And for each image, we have this embedding. And, and we are just project, projecting uh, these embeddings on the 3D space. So you see here, the, these small images represent each image in our, our validation data. We could apply co colors here and also apply the Tisney transform instead of PCA. And we could see some kind of groups of our images. And uh, they split it pretty, pretty much well. So we had about 94% accuracy of the model. So uh, classes are split pretty much good. However, uh, in this analysis, we could detect some classes that are like not so good separable. Uh, like, uh, for example, here in the middle, 
uh, or uh, like uh, uh, some uh, outlier images that d do not fall into, into uh, any dense cluster. So it will allow us to maybe correct some errors in, in, in our data labeling or some get some, some new insights from the data. All right, so that's basically it. I will turn to the presentation. And now we are kind of uh, building some, running some benchmarks uh, to evaluate our model, how it works for different data sets, for different size of the data sets, different number of classes. And here is uh, a couple of uh, benchmarks uh, from the past Kaggle competitions. Uh, so uh, these uh, blue uh, bars shows uh, the time we need to train our model. It is uh, estimated for a single 1080 Ti GPU. Uh, we, 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 uh, we could train models uh, on the multi-GPU, so uh, kind of our model supports multi-GPU. However, just for the sake of benchmarks, we are using just a single uh, 1080 Ti. And we see that uh, based on the data, data size, uh, the, the time could also grow, for example, from a couple of hours to 100 hours. And uh, these uh, red bars represent uh, their uh, like percentage uh, on the private leaderboard. And we see that uh, for all these data sets, uh, this percentage is pretty, pretty good, uh, like bearing in mind that we are just running for a limited uh, time, just under uh, 100 hours on a single GPU. So th this results kind of pretty good. And here is a mix of different classification and also segmentation data sets. OK, and finally, uh, as I said, we have now work in progress for other problem types. So we're working now on object detection and instance segmentation. And also, we, start, we have started to like, implement uh, these kind of prototypes into the real product. So yeah, stay tuned. I guess it will be added shortly to the product. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask. All right. OK, yeah, so, so there is kind of no limit for the data. So if, you, if you, your kind of image data set contains like 1 million images, like ImageNet, or like 10 million images, so we are now running uh, like benchmarks for 10, 10 million images data set. So it, it works. So you need more GPUs, you need more time. But yeah, it works and pr produces good results. So it's, ju it's just a matter of time, so no, uh, like not, not, not matter of data size. NVIDIA is an investor, so we'll make sure that it works sh faster on uh, good hardware. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Jan. Uh, OK, okay. One, one more question. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, can you add custom loss functions or write custom optimizers? Uh, yeah, actually, actually yes. Uh, so for example, for the segmentation problem, we do not have any like in-house losses, for example, in driverless. You, don't, uh, you can't use, for example, uh, log loss or, or, or something like that. So you need to some kind of special like uh, losses for the segmentation. So and it, it could be like uh, implemented using their custom recipes again. So you're just you're passing like uh, a new scorer, and you're using it like like, like uh, a custom loss function. Yeah, and also the same holds for, for the optimizers. So you could like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. <laughs>